What's up guys, Paramoto here. You know, I was hanging around the house today and I was like, you know what, I just got done finishing like 128 gigabytes worth of video editing and then like I started deleting everything off my final cut and I was a blank slate and I just realized that I had nothing else to edit and I was two videos ahead of schedule for video every day June and I was just like, I felt so accomplished but also like I could be doing something. So, let's get to that Q&A that I promised you guys a month ago. So guys, again, welcome to my humble garage. You guys have asked me a question over the last month or so, I'm about to get to it right now. Our first question comes from EWA9. He's got a, a lot of licensing and stuff questions, apparently where he lives, and I'm gonna put the question up right now, it's pretty lengthy. When you're 18, you can get a 125. When you're 20, you can get a 400. And when you're 24, you can finally get the 600,000 CC bikes. So now my question is, when I get that license and ride a 400, is it wise to get myself a Panigale 1199S after two years? I know it's a big jump. A 400 to a 1199S is a big jump. Whew, man. Well, first of all, EWA9, I want to know where you live, because, uh, off the rip, I'm gonna say like maybe India or something like that. Cause I think India and some of those uh, Southern Asian countries have rules like that. I would say that's a huge jump. 400, that's gonna have about 40 horsepower to a 1199, it's gonna have about 200. Bro, that's, you're playing a different sport at that point. Uh, I always reference the, the time that I went from a 300 to a 600. And you're talking about a jump from 38 horsepower, whatever that 300 is, whatever this 300 back here has, to a 600 that's got about roughly 100, so you're talking about a 60 horsepower jump. There was one time where I gave it too much throttle and I whiskey throttle that thing up to about an 11 o'clock wheelie. Whew, man, it got my attention quick. I said for a long time that nobody should ever get a 1,000 cc for a second bike, it's just too much. Um, but there's been people on here that have messaged me that have been successful getting an 1199 Corsa Edition as a first bike. So I would say do whatever you think is best for you. I mean, if it's your dream bike and that's what's going to keep you riding, get your dream bike. Um, keep in mind that thing will kill you if you do anything wrong at all. The, the further back you go in, in Ducati and Pentagonis, the more raw they are. So you're going back a couple models, so we're on a V4, 1299, 1199. Dude, that, that thing's gonna be pretty raw. And um, if you make any misstep, it's gonna chuck you off. But there's things that you can do to get experience. I mean, you can borrow a friend 600, you can do some track days before then. I would say go for it, but be very cognizant of the fact that that bike is, is a lot to handle. And it's probably gonna be out of your skill set for a very long time. This bike, I've ridden that thing for three years. It's way out of my skill set, but I, I have that in the back of my mind that um, at any time if I do something stupid, I could die. I mean, even this bike can do that, but just be careful. I mean, that's my thing. Be careful. If you can afford it and you can insure it uh, with all this crazy licensure stuff, man, I'd say go for it. For the love of God, be careful. All right, our next one comes from E. Cole. So what accessories slash mods you got in that Pentagali? I'm picking mine up in a few weeks. I was wondering if you got any must-haves you recommend. The only must-have um, mod for this bike is probably that comfort seat. The original seat that comes with it is a race seat, very ergonomic, but it is not good for more than 30 minutes of riding. You're gonna need a comfort seat. Everything else is up to your, your choice. I mean, if you wanna do headlights, you wanna do um, a lot of things on the 959 are, the biggest things on 959 that I see people do is the headlight mods and the throttle spacers. Pretty cheap mods, you get a lot out of them. I would say go for that. There's no right or wrong way to mod your bike. Honestly, the only thing I have modded on this bike is the seat and the tank protector. Everything else is stock. I, I like the bike too much to change much, to be totally honest with you. So our next question comes from George Thomas. Not really a question, but I want to use it as a segue to tell you guys something. George Thomas says, we should ride sometime. I have a 959 also, and I'm close to the Raleigh area. So my email is paramoto 959 at gmail.com. If you guys live in the area and you want to come ride with me, it's Show, throw me an email, throw me an email, I'll be happy to come ride with you guys. Or if you have business opportunities or anything like that, paramoto959 at gmail.com, hit me up. I feel like I'm a pretty approachable, likable dude. Okay, our next question comes from Roz. Just a suggestion, can you do a longer unedited Harley video? 
Um, yes. Um, some of the videos that I've been doing on this bike have been more unedited. They've been uh, like my Outer Banks trip. A lot of that was unedited. It just kind of went through. Um, I don't have any problem with that. I would just like to know what do you mean by unedited? Do you mean just a ride out into the country with no cuts, no talking? Do you just want me to do like a one take? You know, like a 10 minute ride, just a one take, just, you know, blah, just throw all the thoughts out for the day? You tell me. I mean, I'm happy. I'm looking for different things to do on the channel. The channel's been a little stagnant, so I'm, I'm looking for something new to spice things up. You tell me what you want to see, Roz. I mean, I'm always open to suggestions. Just need a little bit of clarification sometimes. So DS Moto Tube asks, when you get the Acro or Termi, reference to the exhaust on that bike. I'm probably never going to do an exhaust on that bike just because it's so damn expensive. The, the exhaust for these are starting to come down a little bit, but I mean, generally, I mean, depending on what you want, if you want slip-ons or you want a full system, you're talking about like three to five thousand um, dollars, which can be an entirely new motorcycle just for a part. Yeah, it is 11 o'clock and I am drinking a monster. I am caffeine immune. Yeah, so we're three to five thousand dollars depending on what you want, whether you want slip-ons, whether you want a whole exhaust. There's other things I'd rather do to that bike, but honestly, like I said, I bought it basically as is, as I like it. So there's not a ton that I want to do with it, and let alone a ton like spending lots of thousands of dollars doing an exhaust. Um, exhausts I feel are overrated. I, the thing's got plenty of power already, and this thing's got an exhaust, this Harley's got an exhaust, and it is stupid loud. There's something about a an exhaust that is correct for the bike. Like that is loud enough where I can rev bomb somebody instead of honking at them and gets their attention. It's loud enough that I, I get all the fuels when I have the open throttle, but I don't go deaf. So, I don't know. I'll probably never do it. Um, there are some other companies like Dan Moto and stuff that, that do the cost for that bike. I feel like it's kind of sacrilegious if it's not an Acro or a Termi. Uh, good choices though. Good choices on exhaust. You have good taste, sir. So, our question comes from Keytro Boomin R6. You from Ohio? Question mark. I am from Ohio. I am from a semi-small place called Mentor, Ohio, and I'm gonna say it right, Mentor, Mentor, Ohio. Um, it's about 20 minutes east of Cleveland. Grew up there my whole life. Um, I love, love my childhood there, but I don't, I don't like Ohio anymore. I'm not a big fan of the winters. I'm not a big fan of the lack of job opportunities and the general depression of the area. Probably is mucho better. This question comes from R3D Baron number 92. And he asked a very similar question to our first question. And it kind of makes me wonder if this is the same person with two separate accounts. But it says, is it advisable to jump over to a 1,012.9cc after two years of riding a 250-400? What are your thoughts? Um, I have lots of them. Some of which matter to you. Some of which probably shouldn't because I'm just a brand, like I'm a random dude on YouTube. So, I mean, take my thoughts and opinions uh, with a grain of salt. I have been riding for, I think, eight years now, seven years, eight years. So I do have a little bit of experience, um, a little bit of knowledge and experience to draw from as well. Um, I'll say it depends entirely on you, sir. Um, if you are mature enough to be like, I've only ridden a 250-400 and I haven't even touched 40 horsepower yet, and I'm gonna jump over to something that can go over 200 miles an hour, and that's a ridiculous jump. And having a, any sort of machine that can get you over 200 miles an hour is absolutely bonkers. Um, and I need to have full on respect for that. Then I would say maybe you should do it. Um, I will say that that bike is more than any human being ever needs. And that only has 150 or so horsepower, depending on which dyno you have. Um, like I said again, when I went from a 300 to a 600, it was like playing a different sport. I was I was in the orchestra orchestra and then I went to jazz band. It is totally two totally different things, and I don't think a lot of people are ready for that. Um, you know, going from 40 horsepower to 100 is a ton. That's you're, you're doubling your horsepower, you're doubling your quickness, and I don't even think doubling really even um, appropriately describes it. It's more like exponential. You know, every 20 horsepower is almost like an exponential growth rather than a linear because when I when I would roll my 300, 
I would go up to 100 miles an hour and it would take forever. And I would sit there with a throttle wide open pin and it'd be like, it's gonna take me a minute to get up to 100 miles an hour. This thing will get up to 100 miles an hour, like, I don't know, second or third gear, like, and it's just, and you're there. And a 12.9 is gonna be even faster than that. It's gonna have over 200 horsepower. It's gonna be, like I said, probably able to go over 200 miles an hour. Um, if you know anything about the Japanese, uh, compact of not going over 300 kilometers an hour that does not apply to Italians so that is a huge jump please for the love of God be careful but at the end of the day you know you better than I do I'm just a random dude on the internet you do what's best for you man Tipsy Flacco asks that's an awesome name are you planning on making another trip vlog I was saying bike my man I'm in Bama I love that you say Bama instead of Alabama that's awesome I am planning on doing more trips. I have two big trips that are just searing in my mind on this Harley here. I want to do a New England trip, so I'm gonna. I really want to start in Raleigh, and I want to go basically straight up into uh, like Central Pennsylvania and like to the upstate New York. Uh, one of one of our friends on the channel has actually uh, put down the mountain ranges that I should check out. Excuse me, and. I want to go straight up and then I want to go over hitting every major city on the way over and then coming down the eastern seaboard and I want to jump from like uh, New York to Virginia Beach and then go through the uh, the bridge tunnel that goes from Virginia Beach um, goes to Virginia Beach from Delaware and then on to Raleigh it, I have a plan for about eight days I don't know if I'm gonna get the time off this year for it but I really want to do it um, it's a couple thousand miles or something like that it's, it's a pretty far trip I want to do it mostly camping, some Airbnbs. Um, but my life is kind of changing right now. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. And then the, the bucket list trip. And what, what I kind of want to do is almost check them off. Before I get another standard bike, I want to do the New England trip and then I want to do a round the country trip. And I want to do both these trips on uh, predominantly back roads, uh, avoiding highways at all costs. And I want to, the, the bucket list trip would have me going from Raleigh down to uh, like Jacksonville, Florida, and I want to dip my toes in the Atlantic, and then do predominantly secondary roads from Jacksonville straight on across through like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Bama, uh, Texas, through the desert, onto LA, up the Pacific Coast Highway 1, hit up Cameron Sims, um, Seattle, and then I want to come on back. Uh, that is a huge trip. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do it, but it is my bucket list trip. Um, if I got to call out a bunch of days or whatever from work, I'd probably do it just to have the, the life experience. And also, um, I wouldn't mind, you know, maybe if I get into real estate and I'm my own boss. I'll have all the time world, I can work from anywhere I want. So, those are the two trips that I want to do. Once I'm done with that, I'll probably, I might get a bigger Harley after that trip. Maybe a uh, low rider S, I don't know. But, how do you like your roadster, my man? You let me know. And if you're ever in Raleigh, please feel free to hit me up. Paramount959.gmail.com. Next question is from Stacy Ned. Comfort, period. So, referencing it, what, what, what he's referencing to, I like it. You rode a CBR 600 r now you ride the Pentagoli V2. Um, we spoke about it. It's actually 959, not quite a V2, not quite fancy enough. Um, no hard feelings, Stacy Ned. How's the comfort level between the both? Still enjoying the Harley videos too. Thank you. Thank you for watching both of these, both sides of this channel. It means a lot to me. I love motorcycling in general. Um, we might not always have a Pentagoli on the channel. We might not always have a sport bike. We might not always have a Harley, but I just like riding. So thank you for supporting just the general love of motorcycling. Um, I replied to this already, but um, the comfort of the, of the V2, the 9.9 versus the CBR 600 R is is different. It's the CBR 600 R was a lot more upright, but it was a lot less comfortable from the hips down. Like my butt and like I really scrunched. Like I couldn't like my my legs were so scrunched up. I don't think I could retract them another millimeter. This one I have a little bit more room. Um, this one's a lot more comfortable on the butt area and less comfortable on the wrist area. But I could. Um, kind of correct that by, you know, leaning up different ways, kicking the leg out, you know, doing different things. I actually did more miles consistently on this bike than I did a CBR 600. So I would say this bike is more comfortable 
although I would um, murder a midget prostitute to take this bike on a road trip instead. So, um, sport bike road trips, although I've done them, I've done several. Um, it's amazing to road trip on a motorcycle, to be totally honest with you. You always gotta be thankful for that opportunity, but um, you like punishing yourself if you're a, a sport bike motor tripper, to be honest with you. Craig McInnes says, will they bring the Roadster back? I don't know. I don't know, to be honest with you. Um, the new CEO of Harley, who was also the CEO of Puma, went out and axed most of the Sportster lineup. I think the Sportster lineup is now um, the Irons, so the AA3 and the 1200, and I think the 48. And there's a few other models um, of the Sportster that are no longer a thing anymore. There's three Sportster models and they axed everything else, which is very sad. Um, it feels like Harley really went backwards with that. Um, you know, I am a Harley fan. I've got a Harley shirt on right now. Um, but I'm disappointed in Harley with what they did. I really am. Um, there's no, no two ways to walk around it. There's no, you know, there's no other way to beat on a bush. Um, they asked a lot of really good models. I mean, I was really thinking about um, trading in um, this bike and getting a Bronx. Uh, I was starting to put a little bit of money aside because I thought that would be really cool to be like one of the with Harley Davidson Bronx. And if you guys don't know what that is, that was going to be the Street Fighter. Um, but it, it never sufficed. They axed it. They axed a couple other things. They axed this bike, which I'm glad I got it now. I'm, I'm really glad I got this bike. Um, I, I paid a premium for it. Um, I took a long time negotiating for it, but I'm really glad I got it. It's the only Harley that's like actually performance driven. It's got dual disc front brakes. It's got inverted ports for better handling. You know, it's just got a lot of features on it that make it a better motorcycle. And for some reason, Harley doesn't do it, even though it would cost them almost no money. I don't know if they're gonna bring it back. I'm sure there'll be another sportier sportster. I'm sure there'll be another more performance sportster. Harley always does this. They innovate for a little while, and then they pull back. And they innovate for a little while, and then pull back. And if you look at Harley Davidson, I know Zero came out with it before, but Harley Davidson was the first major motorcycle company to come out with an all electric motorcycle with a lot of wire. It wasn't Kawasaki, it wasn't Honda, it wasn't Ducati, it wasn't Triumph, it wasn't KTM, it was Harley Davidson leading the charge on that. And now it's rebranded. It's not, I think the Livewire is its own brand now. I don't even think it's Harley Davidson anymore. Um, they axed most of the Roadster lineup. They axed the Dana, or the Dyna lineup a while ago. They asked a lot of programs that were going to be pretty cool, and they just pulled it on back to the motorcycles that sell, which are the big baggers and the classic Harleys and stuff like that. But they sell, but they sell to a very small market. I did a video a while ago on what Harley should do to start um, reinvigorating the brand. And I think they could use a motorcycle quite a lot like this, quite similar to this, to. Um, to renew the brand and just basically take a bike like this have some cool looking bags on the back like you know cafe racer style have like a real professional looking guy with like a macbook in like a, a freaking coffee shop like he's probably like some creative like executive or something like that you know puts his uh you know laptop in a cool looking case you know it was all like smart boss like looking goes out puts his macbook in his freaking you know cool looking cafe racer saddle bag and then like scoots off into like the night on his Harley Davidson in the middle of the city. It would be a really cool commercial, at least the one that I have in my head. But um, honestly, they asked it. I mean, they always pull back on innovation. It's very sad. But we'll see what the future holds. I'm, I'm hoping that they go back to, you know, trying to innovate. I will say that I don't believe that Harley is going to be the brand that we know it for very long. I, I don't think you can post constant losses. Um, they've hidden a lot of their data for a while now, like their average rider age and stuff like that. Because everybody's aging out of the Harleys. Like they're all going into nursing homes and stuff. And like people my age, like we can't really afford a $20,000 motorcycle. Like I say that, but I, I have a $16,000 one. But um, a lot of people my age can't afford to have that much of a luxury. And it's gonna, it's gonna kill the brand eventually. So, so our last question, Finishing strong, <laughs> great name, People Noodle Soup. It says, hey, this is back during the gas crisis. Where are people having gas issues? I'm just curious, curious which states are hit the hardest. I'm a PA, my mom is in Delaware. We haven't had any issues. I'm not finding any, I'm not finding much news about it. 
So um, what happened a few weeks ago was uh, the Colonial Pipeline was hacked and it was, I don't know if you guys on the West Coast had to deal with this at all, but it basically shut down gas supply to the East Coast. And the way that America set up is that everything that we do here from food to gas is basically like an on-demand system that like, you know, we only have a couple of days supply or we run out, so we constantly have to have that on-demand delivery going or we don't have things. So what happens is Colonial Pipeline gets hacked, it gets out, everybody starts panic buying, and now there's nothing. Just like how everything in 2020 is, everybody's panic buying everything, and it's not really a shortage, but it's like an artificial shortage. That's really what happened here. Um, I still can barely find premium for these things. You know, these, both these bikes take premium, and it's been hard to find. So um, please, if you're in this area, please stop freaking buying up everything just because the news is, is making you scared. Please stop it. But that, that was the story for that. That's what's happened in Raleigh. Um, I almost didn't take this bike out to the Outer Banks last week because I didn't know if there was gonna be gas in the middle of the country, which it seemed like once you got outside of the cities that people were smarter, like the country folk, and they didn't panic buy everything because they probably already have a bunch of gas at home, but um, I didn't have any issues, so. Anyway guys, that's it for today's Q&A. If you guys want me to keep on doing Q&As or you want more Q&As, throw me more questions down below. I might answer them right away and then if it's a good enough question like all of these were, uh, I might answer them on a future Q&A just publicly and just for everybody to know. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching again. Reminder, we're doing a video every day in June. This will be a video I don't even know, probably like nine or 10. So we're going strong. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for making this possible. Hopefully um, more things will be happening on this channel um, soon and we will get exciting stuff. Anyway guys, I'll see you later. Deuces.